All right, this one's a fun one. Episode 219. This is Podcast Mastery for Real Estate Success. We're going to help you. We're going to teach you. We're going to help you learn how to boost your reach and you build your real estate business through podcasting. We're going to get started right now. So meta. <laughs> Right. This is a fun one. This is a podcast about podcasting, right? Um, today's episode 219. This is the podcast mastery for real estate success. And um, look, it's going to help boost your reach and build your business. And I think we we know a little bit about this. This is 219 bit. shows that you know of. There's some other okay. ones that are hidden. So it's like probably 225, 232 total shows that we've done. Yeah. Just with the only real estate podcast worth listening to. I sometimes talk about this and I forget sometimes that like this show is such a regular staple of what we do because you guys know my online social media presence outside the show, which is basically it's very strong, non-existent. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Right. And we talk about it. might it, be a I'm shirtless like, pick every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing for three years. Abs. Um, <laughs> but I'm just so like, I don't post stuff regularly at all. And then I, we talk about content creation. I forget that we create a ton of, there's so many hours of video of me out there. Not all good, by the way, but I forget that like this is content creation. So this is really a show about content creation and consistency and all yeah. the ways to master what you're doing. For sure. And, and, you know, we're going to thank our sponsors here in a second. Cause that's one way that uh, we continue doing this show. Um, Cause it does cost money and tour studios makes us look amazing and sound great. Um, but, it's been, I mean, look, this has led us into having Tara, Tarek El Musa on, right? Yeah, he was from, um, what is it, Flip or Flop? Mm -hmm. um, and then whatever the other ones are, then he ended up marrying, uh, selling Sunset, selling sunset Chick. Girl. Yeah. Um, so we had him, we've, we've had Armando Montalongo on. Good dude. Um, from uh, Flip This House. And we've had... Chauncey Fam, who's a friend, who's a friend anyway, but I mean, star of zombie house flipping. Mm -hmm. it, it, look, it's allowed us to get in front of some people. Um, you know, what is it? Allen Stein Jr. Who uh, really uh, such really a good show. Yeah. Yeah. Great I mean, show. To, like, we've, we've talked to people who used to talk to Kobe and Michael Jordan and like yeah. the one degree we are away from some people baffles my ass sometimes because I'm like, how are we even yeah. talking to you? Our right follow up now? game was even a little better. We <laughs> definitely have had we've Michael had Jordan the, on the show. Yeah, right. Now. CEO of Lion. I thought you were going like, to say Kobe. I was like, I almost went I there, like, but too soon? a little early in the show. Too soon? <laughs> the show was on before that. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I look at this and say that that has created opportunities. Now, this show right now that we do is not designed for us to really make to monetize it right mm -hmm. we do have sponsors of this show it, it it's pay, helps pay for the space and some of the hosting of this and you know some of our sponsors are you ready for this jesse some of our sponsors <laughs> is mortgage mike right he's over there slinging those mortgage mike uh Talk approvals. About master. yeah he's you know mortgage mike at one time was the master of, of uh tiktok and instagram reels and facebook reels. yeah he, what happened to i'm that? very disappointed yeah. well he's gotten busy he's over there just I giving guess. that mortgage mike stamp okay. of approval giving That's loans fair. left and right out he's so. just not slacking off the no, master he, of his own domain now. but you know That's what right. happens when when you get busy in real estate what happens when you mm -hmm. stop doing that lead gen your business falls off ah, it's me putting yeah, my arms up on a roller coaster now. yeah exactly but uh you can just go to mmgloans.com and just uh let mortgage mike give you an approval See what it feels like when he gives you that approval. It makes you feel really good. Yeah. Right. And then uh, after that, we've got Armadillo Home Warranty Theron Smith giving that hard shell protection uh, on everyone's house. He personally will come over and work on it. And you go to armadillo.one forward slash tour, T O R E. Um, and then we just got out of our Homeward property management meeting and uh, we're managing over 400, over 400 doors and growing um, and, and really always always working on streamlining how yes. to improve the the client the tenant and the investor relationship right sure. so if you have a property if you're an agent that has an investor or a house not selling and they're thinking about renting it out refer it over to homeward let the experts get that find that tenant let it lease out and let let's leverage out the management on that one most landlords aren't good managers so go to homeward dfw.com and then uh look you 
this show is about this. You need to go create your own podcast. And Jesse will, will do that over at Tor Studios, tourstudios.com. He'll get you set up like this, just like our other friends, Tamara Gady. Yeah, crushing yep. it. Crushing it with, uh, she's with Lawyer's Title. And uh, she's got, is it Spill the Tea? That was, uh, no, it's the Closing Table now. The Closing Table. Such a to, better name. Wasn't it, you, wasn't Spill it, the it Tea was, sounds yeah. awesome. Is that available? It was. It was Spill the LT, I said. Spill the, the LT. LT. Yeah. It was for Lawyer's Title. We were on okay. that show. I was we telling were. them the other day, so like, you know, if, if you've been watching the show for any amount of time, like all of us have certain roles in this life, uh, this business ecosystem that we've created. And sometimes my role can just kind of be like, Hey, I didn't even know that was happening. <laughs> and the other day, I'm scrolling Scrolls through Facebook. Just so shocked. Yeah, I'm scrolling through Facebook, and like the last three days, I saw Ben Baker in here. Right, I've seen Monica Kelly in here. I saw Bednick David po post something the other day with uh, or today with another guy who I went to his Instagram page and followed him just because of what he was talking about with David. Like that's the kind of thing I'm a part of this, and I still find out stuff that happens in this room that I'm like, oh, that guy's cool. I'm gonna go follow him. I think that's what. Agents don't realize is yeah. just putting this stuff out there. When we stop doing it, people notice, yeah. right? Like yep. once you get consistent with it, people know you for doing that Cha thing. Yeah, um, Chauncey Fam's supposed to be doing a show in here, so uh, they're working on the coloring of what that will look like. That's right. Background. Um, I think she wants it changed all the time, doesn't she? Yeah, that's yeah. what she said. She wants to change every single time. My Absolutely. first serious girlfriend was named Monica Kelly. Interesting. Huh. Do you probably, think, probably not the same person. Well, but, maybe that'd be awkward. I mean, now you guys know a little bit more yeah. about me. Yeah, interesting. It would be weird if I came in here yesterday and she was just like, Brian, um, you son of a... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Picked up one of the cameras and threw it at me. <laughs> but let's break this down. It's, I want to go and and give the steps on this. And, um, and, and look, make it the evolution of what our show has been, right? Yeah. Our show has always been real, raw, relatable content talking about our real estate businesses i think four or five years ago today or yesterday stuman was on mm -hmm. and i actually reposted i was going to repost it and I, I i missed it but my cat i reposted a couple of years after and one of the reposts was like like if you're if you're uh if you're afraid of cuss words or hearing difficult things you probably want to turn off your yeah. whatever right like because then that that was episode five yeah right really it has early. been that way forever yeah right and and this has been a staple in our calendar uh every wednesday mm -hmm. um forever right and, and six years guys. and then you can even see you can go through that there's some part of it where it was kind of wheels off where we didn't have a lot of we just came in here and just fly by the seat of our pants and now we're 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 re honing even our skills on this yeah um as we get more comfortable to say hey what is what does the industry need right now yeah and, and, I, and well and i think that speaks to to number one is like one of the things that we did well, tell, say what number one is. I'm about to say. Okay. It. See, this is what he hasn't learned yet. Is like we we just like he doesn't have trust in his hosts. Uh, <laughs> it is, no, I've done this right. for 220. <laughs> we run another show as well. You might have too much experience. Yes, I know exactly what this this it. host to my left over here <laughs> so, likes to just dive on in and not over not well, explain what he's what looking. What we've at. really done well is step number one, and that's define your niche, niche, whatever, and goals. And from the beginning. We were pretty adamant that we were going to do a show that we wanted to do every week. And I think that's really key if you're going to start a podcast in real estate or anything is like, this is definitely a work to learn and enjoy before it's a work to earn labor of, of whatever is a labor of love. Um, you are very unlikely to directly profit from your podcast. Now you can get your brand and name and all that type of stuff out there. I just pretty much guarantee you that you will not do it long term if you don't enjoy doing it. And so one of the things that we were really hell bent on was that we're going to do a show that's very much us because we could do a real estate show in a lot of different ways. We could make it really buttoned up. We could really make it like very, you know, generic and by the book. And I just don't think if we did that in the beginning, we would ever be here right now. So s define what you're going to be about and don't change that. Think deeply about what your show is going to be before or your content strategy, whatever it is, as a podcast or whatever you're doing. Think deeply about what the approach is going to be before you start and then try not to deviate. Because a lot of the reason that people, especially with podcasts, don't get past like episode 11 is they just dive into episode one. And then by episode two, they're like, oh, but what if we tried this? And like the first 10 episodes are just all over the place. There's like no synergy. There's no defined way of doing things. And then it's really easy to just get exhausted and get and, and give up. We just stuck to what we were going to do, even when it wasn't working in the beginning. And like, that's why we're here now is because we would do this if nobody was watching. 
I have probably been a part of or personally produced hundreds of hours of myself on camera. And hands down, the two greatest things that we have that I've ever been a part of video wise were the taco videos you and I used to do in this podcast. And both of those were the most clearly defined and organic versions of myself, as opposed to when we've done stuff like the vlog, which was so it it was it was genuine, but it was had to be so prepped and staged. Or when we used to sit in this room and I would I would do talking head stuff with Brian firing off questions from the other side of the table. Right. There was some gold in there. But overall, that was that was outside of us just showing up and doing that. And hands down, the two best things that have been received the best by other people They had people commenting the most, that had people the most engaged were the things that we probably were the most authentic versions of ourselves in. And it was those taco videos and this damn thing. Yeah, 100 percent. Like when you are you, no matter what, what you're doing, people respond to genuineness authenticity right so like define your niche and your goals make sure they center around you as a human and bring your most genuine self and then you'll always have the stamina to keep going yeah but and and at the same time give yourself give yourself some grace and some patience that it's not going you're not going to sound great right we had like um you're gonna suck at the beginning yeah i mean if you (laughs) We had we had the wives on our other show, the the yeah. More Doors podcast, and it was wives takeover. And they shot it twice because we do this live. And like Matt just said, Kelman just said it was like, and we run a lot of risk doing this live. <laughs> um, you know, you can put your foot in your mouth, um, say some things that maybe get misconstrued um, and get canceled, yeah, which yeah. has always been a fear of mine. <laughs> um, but you know, that's just something we've made a commitment to is always do this alive. Um, but the other show is, re- is recorded. They did it twice because the first one was it sounded not authentic. Yeah. They overthought it. Um, Everybody's so nervous. Yeah, they're just, nervous. Yeah. Like like there was actually like millions of people listening right then and there. And it wasn't no. the second time they got it was sounded much better. Jesse's about to release that episode, I think, next week. Which one? The, the, girls? the wives. They went out today. Went out Woo! today. Yes, sir. Nice. So that went out today. And so the more that you do this, the more that you get comfortable and you get the flow down. Yeah. And um, what what we have found is is bring if you need help, because one thing I don't do that Matt does very well. I know Brian doesn't do this. We don't we're not solo people. Yeah. Matt can talk and can talk <laughs> and can talk. <laughs> With no one there, which is, I wish I could do that. It's a skill um, for sure. Yeah, because I try to do it. I'm just, I talk really, really fast. I'm just get to the point so I can get up and in that live and get the, get out of there. Yeah. Right. And so the best thing that you can do with this is bring guests on. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then be prepared. And there's nothing wrong with being over prepared. Um, and, and, you know, that's Tam- something Tamara does that over preparation. I remember we've all been on Tamara's yeah. show and she like, boy, she brings up stuff about me. It's like, you know, the Nardwar guy who goes up and speaks to the rappers about their past. Yep. Yes. I feel like she's like the Nardwar of our world because she comes up. She's like, hey, remember on episode 110 when you said this? I was like, what in the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and so and so that's, you know, that's planning. She plans her content. Yes. Right. And that's something that for a little bit we didn't do all the way we yeah. planned it based on what was the pain that we were going through right then and there yeah and this was kind of our venting session yeah i think the difference with this and maybe for some people is that yeah we did maybe we didn't do as good a job as like explicitly planning our stuff but like we work in the business every day and so so much of it came natural because we didn't have to plan we we talk what people don't realize about this show is like this show continues after the show all week. This is just what it's like to sit in a room with the four of us. That's actually <laughs> worth noting, though, that, that part part of what we did choose in, in, in picking out like our niche and our goals was that like we did pick something that was already inherently in our wheelhouse. So we didn't have to go out there and learn a whole new thing. Right. That is pretty important that you have some base level knowledge and expertise in what you're talking about. Otherwise, you're taking on a lot more than you probably need to. Yeah. And, and so, again, Part one of this is define your goals, you know, and and pick the 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 subject matter, the niche you want to go down. And and you can, you know, we talked about this a little bit is is understand who who's your listener, who's your avatar. Yeah. Like again, the only real estate podcast worth listening to is designed for you, real estate agents, right? And lenders and titles. Sure, and lenders and titles. And but our, our consumers wouldn't connect out. with this. Our buyer buy and seller consumers for the most part wouldn't really connect with the content because we're not talking about the stuff that's going to ring ring with them. Yeah. And can you talk about this on a weekly basis? Because consistency is key. 
you know, you want to get out multiple shows, not just yeah. one. Yeah. Um, and so are, are they first time home buyers, first time home sellers? Are they real estate enthusiasts, is investors, mm -hmm. whatever that may be? But can you bring something up every single week? Mm -hmm. And so you need to define those goals and then set clear objectives around whether on how you want to establish your, your authority, your brand to mm -hmm. become that go to person in the market in your mm -hmm. local marketplace. So it's like, are you sharing insights? You know, make sure that they're, they're correct um, on the home buying and selling process, providing updates on market trends. Your goal should give you know, should give your content strategy. Right. Mm -hmm. So around that, it's, it's designed to say, all right, this is the format. This is the flow. And it should sound like this mm -hmm. on a week in, week out yep. basis. Um, and that's part of planning your content. And that stuff too is planning your content, yep. right? AI yeah. helps with this a ton. It's super does. I, I will <laughs> tell you, since AI, if you notice our improvement, a lot of this is AI. Well, we're using it to go deeper. One of the things I love doing with AI, like for instance, you were just talking about the buyer thing. Literally go into ChatGPT and ask it, hey, what are the top 10 reasons someone would buy a house in Dallas, Fort Worth? And then take each one of those things and make, you just made 10 videos, by the way, right? Yes. And if those can be your content for your webinar, your show, whatever you want to produce. It can be that type of AI content. I follow a gentleman that uh, Beth Silverman, friend of the show, turned me out. His name is Phil Stringer on Instagram. And he just puts out ChatGPT prompts. He had one the other day to like write a social media post calendar. And then you, 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 you know, we're back to that thing on social media where it's like, reply uh, clue if you want me to send you this. And then you reply it, yeah. boom, it's in your Instagram inbox, right? And then you go sign up and you get this chat GPT prompt. And you go in and you copy and paste it in chat GPT and it spits out all the stuff that you need. You don't have to come up with the prompt anymore if you follow the right people. The planning, the content part has became the easiest thing. Jesse deals with this all the time. Yeah, I use I use AI pretty much every single day when I'm doing stuff. I believe. Um, well, and I was going to say too, uh, on, on the prompt that you were talking about, uh, adding in like the pain point, yes. like that's a big one. Like yeah. what are the pain points for, yeah. for buyers in the Dallas Fort Worth? Absolutely. Like that's a huge one. Who, that who's the, who's the guy on YouTube? You know, this guy, he's the guy that teaches you stuff. Your dad would teach you. Oh, oh I, think, I like that. One. I follow him. I think he's just yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. What if, what if you did just a, a, a whole YouTube channel of like common chat GPT prompts and then doing what it tells you to do? Like the so, like I social mean, media planner. Like it, literally the whole title of the video would just be the chat GPT studios. prompt. Yeah. Is this 18? What was 18. that, Mark? 1808. Bro. Let's go. I'm going back and let's, that you just hit it. It would literally just be a YouTube channel of the most popular chat GPT prompts and then you doing the thing. Yeah. Well, we are, I will tell you right now, we are working out because AI, um, AI has helped kind of this, all, all, four of our brains and you know with jesse on this is it's just scattered at times mm -hmm. and so to be able to use ai to help narrow this down so that we have the formula and the plan makes it so much easier to then conduct and host a podcast sometimes you get too far you get too deep into something to remember the basics about it right like i know all the reasons why somebody should buy a house but if somebody said kill it right now give me five reasons why somebody should be a house because like, oh, oh, you're yeah. not renting because right, i make right. money when you do yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if I ask ChatGPT that and I've got it printed out in front of me, it's it's one, you'd sound a lot better too. Yes. Right. Well, and then again, you want to plan this out. And and we, you know, look, we're sharing everything that we have done just on this, that if if I'm gonna go create a podcast, which again, we probably should be practicing what we preach on this subject, uh -huh. is is creating that content calendar so you know at least the next three months so that you can start building and preparing for that. Yeah. Um, cause you know, we've talked about people have built, I've seen people build a uh, successful business off social media, yeah. uh, just posting on Facebook and they had a content calendar they created every Sunday, they yep. would create it. They even had their posts, they scheduled it and then posted it that day or had maybe yeah. a, a VA post it, yeah. which by the way, you can have AI do that, do that for, for you. Well, I mean, like I, I follow this agent. I met her in open house. Her name's Brittany. It's her last name's Noble Jack. Now I don't remember what it was before, but she's gotten married. She's now recently switched her Instagram over to like a, a social media like realtor tips page more than it is a consumer based page at least the stuff that i see right okay and so she's doing this exact thing prompts for agents like this information is everywhere yeah. almost laid out and then you take somebody else's format and you run it through g through chat gpt of what you want to do and those plans are spit out. i actually think number two is the easiest thing yeah, nowadays to plan your content. that used to be so hard that now you can just be like victoria and i are doing something right we've been we've came in here and recorded a couple of things i went to chat gpt the other day and said give me the top 20 things husband and wife should talk about if they're talking to other couples yeah and it was like spit out stuff I didn't even That's think so about good. talking about. Like yeah, that. dude. So and I was good. just like, okay, here's the 20 things that we can talk about. Yeah. So while like again, you know, again, this is about creating a podcast, right? And and building your brand and, and becoming that that go to authority, uh, authority authoritative figure in, in your marketplace. But as you're hearing this, we're utilizing other tools such as AI. Um, 
you know, as you're listening to this, here's what I would ask you guys, you know, whether whenever you're listening to this recording, if you're listening live, great and, and comment on this, please. But we have an opportunity to bring a partnership in for AI, mm -hmm. you know, to there's I know there's over 700 prompts. It's growing. It's something that I've implemented from from listing grabbers to creating it. And you start seeing it. We're implementing it more and more over the past 30 days. And I'll tell you, that's I thought I knew a little bit of AI. I did not. And it's working. So if if you guys would be interested, we would make money off of this as an affiliate, just full disclosure. If that's something that you would like us to bring to the marketplace together. Then uh, let's have a conversation about that. Just reach out to us um, so that it would be worth our time to do that. I love um, that. You want to hear something crazy about AI today? Facebook. Maybe this is why it went down yesterday. They actually have an AI generator now on your descriptions yep. or your comment thing. So today I did this video just about self-care for your wife, right? But I didn't really know how to title it. So I wrote some nonsense. And then I asked Facebook AI to change it. And what Facebook AI changed it to is men, remember your partner's self-care is not an indulgence. Mm -hmm. Matt Kelderman would have never written that sentence in his entire life. <laughs> I think I wrote like, guys, take yeah, care guys. of your wife. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Something much and more it changed brand. it into something that was A, a lot cleaner, a lot more effective. Yeah. It, it sounded more engaging. If you're not getting on with AI and using it to yep. write stuff and help you be a better writer, you're going to fall behind even clowns like me who are. Exactly. What yep. do you think really happened though yesterday? I don't. I don't. Let's not get into that. We're not going <laughs> to. That's a different. That's a, whole that's thing a different with, podcast. That's a whole thing. Let me, we talked about the. Let me, let me definitely clear something up though. Homer DFW did crash order it earlier today. And I have to assure you, we were not hacked. Yeah, our, our emails just, are good. Brian hit the wrong button. Yeah, <laughs> it's back up and running. So yeah. if, if you were wondering, yeah, Homer DFW is fine. I want to. I want on on number three here, right? Because this stops. I think this stops a lot of people before you even get started. Yeah, it is dude. get the right equipment. And yeah. Jesse, who's off camera. We need to start bringing Jesse in as uh, on a camera view. He won't angle. do it. We keep telling him, and he doesn't want to do it. He's got a GoPro. You point right yeah, at himself. Exactly. That he's got a whole other fourth channel. I do. That is our whole thing about equipment, though. We could sit here and go off about how this started versus where it is now. Sure, hundred percent. Yeah. We started on grainy webcams. webcams. So, yeah, let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about that. So, so this stops most people because they want the best equipment, and I don't even know what we have in here. We just Jesse just said, hey. Give me this amount of money, and and we upgraded our cameras. Each one of us owns a camera. Brian's camera. <laughs> I sat I sat in Brian's chair yesterday, and that camera. I was like, man, I don't look that great. That, that's too good of a camera. Let's get me back to my I see other the pores one. on your face. I was like, yeah, <laughs> and I do a skincare routine. I'm like, is it working? I don't even know. Yeah, um, do that called Aero Lab. No, this is through uh, uh, Rodan Fields. Oh, cool. Um, oh, it's a strange name, so I like it. Yeah, but uh, uh, get the right equipment and. Audio matters, especially on a podcast. Yes. If you're not doing video, audio which, matters way audio more. Audio matters yeah. way more. Yeah. So much. It, you could have the worst looking video, but as long as the audio is there, then, then yes. people will still listen. And if you're doing a podcast, there's still a lot more people consuming the audio version of this. Yes. Like if we go back and look at, uh, at our speaker, um, Spreaker, yeah, it's like downloads, yeah, it's downloads more than our online views, more than online yeah. views. It's happening through. We know that most people have Apple product because they're listening on Apple Podcast. What do we say? Like ninety? There's ninety-seven percent. Ninety-seven percent listens through. And Apple. we're pretty big in New Zealand. We found out. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Wow. Random. Tight. That yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Random. Spotify. Another thing Matt didn't know about yeah. what he does. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I, I like to geek out on that. I like to see where it is and then understand. Like, all right. We don't have a lot of just uh, like what is the other store? What's the Google? Is it Google or Android? Oh, I have no idea. Well, there's Spotify, Google, Google Play, Google Play. Oh, yeah. Google We're not Play. getting a lot of Google Play. Spotify's a little bit, not a lot, but I don't know. I think more. This is a, this is a testament to Apple <laughs> users. I think I think they're just more intelligent people that listen to podcasts. Oh, sure. <laughs> I mean. I was sitting here thinking, like, hey, don't, don't, don't s on any of the other users. And then Nick was just Nick just Nick slow walked right I mean, into it. I will run through that door and, and I will double down on it um, because Beautiful. I still like the blue eye message. I do too. You I mess it up too. when you're not. So, so get the right equipment. Look, there's so much out there. Jesse has a Jesse has a YouTube video about do, uh, about some of the equipment. He'll put it in there so you can go to his YouTube channel just to see. Because I don't geek out on that. All I know is as long as I sound good, yeah. as, lo as long as the quality of the video is good, that's all that matters. Yeah, don't overthink it either. There's such good stuff out there. Like, make a decision. 
here's and i'm gonna chime in on that real quick because there's one big thing if you are an apple user and you have an iphone and a mac you can tether your phone Mm. to your computer that's right and you can record using your phone as a webcam you just you're you're speaking spanish to me and you know what's funny is i actually that video that you're talking about nick i recorded that tethered did you with my iphone did you say that i did okay i didn't watch it all you should go while while we're talking you should go find that link and drop in the comments i think that'd be super valuable yeah so again get the right equipment there's so much out there we'll have jesse we'll have jesse do that and then let's go to record and edit your podcast so this is something again if you're doing live like we do we don't we don't edit our podcasts no no we just <laughs> what you see is what you get and Not we post one. it yeah, no. right and and that i think that for us it made sense because number one back then versus what we have now it was uh we started in a garage had someone do it we were across just like the Beatles. Yep. <laughs> and that one fell like the same well, level. Exactly. We, we got a little disagreement on 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 that. That was what led us. Who knows? We could have still we could still be in that garage today if there wasn't a disagreement about what was going on with that one. That's fair. And then we moved it to our own where we just use StreamYard, which is what we use our, our software right now. Yeah. Um, and we were doing it on webcam. Yep. Yeah. And you know what? That was okay for the time because no one else was doing what we were doing at a consistent level. Mm-hmm. And StreamYard was still new. It was B Live. It was B Live. Yeah, it wasn't later. It was till later we did Stream. Yeah, B Live. Yeah, StreamYard was the upgraded version. It was B Live. Yeah. And what what set that into motion for us to upgrade was Brian and I went out of town. Kelderman had to uh, interview. Uh, I think it was Draper. It was Draper. Kyle Draper. He's been on the show multiple times, and it was. Kelderman was in the closet, literally. Yeah. In the closet. <laughs> and it's so weird. Dude. Some might say he's still in. Yeah. <laughs> so weird, dude. I and, just don't even. Ugh. And it just was awful, yeah. right? It was glitchy. just the idea that we went out of town and just fully knowing Kelderman was going to be in charge of full production on a podcast. And, well, it just it, it should have worked. <laughs> the thing is, no, the closet was the live video the night before where I was telling everybody to join. Oh, okay. I was in the office okay. when we did it, but we just had a bad internet connection and I could not keep it together. And that for again for live that's for live that work that and, and just for this is funny because now we're just talking about just talking shit about each other now. <laughs> Kelderman is just the type of guy that his personality is such he cannot handle technical difficulties. No, not at I all. I remember when we first started playing Call of Duty during the uh, pandemic, <laughs> and he couldn't figure out how to do an update. He's he's quit the game immediately. Yeah. <laughs> and then he fucking group texts. He's like, "Can't figure this shit out. I'm done. I'll so talk to you guys just, tomorrow." He just can't <laughs> handle it. Like, maybe maybe as as our, our as, as we keep bringing up our tour potential. Um, a store where it needs us we need to have a shirt that says don't kelderman it yeah exactly <laughs> because because at the same time if you're starting a podcast you're gonna have stuff that goes wrong absolutely and if you just kelderman it then you're quitting this all the <laughs> yeah. you wouldn't make it to 219 episodes on that but record and edit your podcast so you need to be prepared if you're conducting interviews uh prepare your questions in advance and share them with the guests and yep. that was something that like we don't do because for us we can go into anybody's studio, anybody's interview, and be ready to go. Mm-hmm. I don't need, to, I don't need, I, like, they send me questions. I don't read them. I don't. Either. And I'm like, look, I can figure out how to answer them. No, like, you know, as long as we're not talking. Something. I'm actually going to screw myself up if I read through it. Very yes. honestly, the way yeah. my, pro- I'm going to overthink stuff. And, and look, I'm, like Nick said, I may put my foot in my mouth. I, I'm not always, I, I think I'm better at thinking through things before I say them now. But if I read those questions, I'm probably going to lead myself to to being some inauthentic version of myself as well. Sure. So I think they're great to have for yourself. And like you said, you know, editing and all of these things, it just goes back to planning out your content. That's going to be your template for your show. Yep. And it's also going to be your template for your edit. Right. Because if, if you if you are bullet pointing, we could very easily go through this show right now and edit out all 10 points or however many sure. there end up being as each of their individual little standalones, chop out parts, make it under a minute. Now it's a reel. Right. There's all kinds of things you could do with it. But that is going to be your template for your edit as well. Sure. And then, yeah, you can template and then edit it in software so you can use software uh, to remove any mistakes, long pauses or unnecessary segments. And sometimes, look, your guests, sometimes your guests are more nervous than you are. 
And so there's going to be times it's like, oh, we need to cut that. Yep. And so you've got, you're going to have to be prepared for that. You may need to look at outsourcing that if you're not good at this, if you have the budget to do so, or just go to tourstudios.com and let oh. Jesse handle it. Jesse will do all that for you and make you sound good, look good and feel good. That's true. Um, and from that, I will say, here's what I'm trying to, cause I'm not good at the editing part, right? I don't have the patience. I could be good at it. I just don't care. Yeah. yeah. And I watched this video yesterday because I'm really what I'm what I'm trying to learn just for just for as a sidebar, like I'm going down this TikTok path because Chauncey Chauncey fam is crushing yeah. it on there. And what I have learned is that we're really good at this part, or at least I am decent. Maybe um, I'm not going to pat myself on the back now that now that the way that it came out sounded really bad. No, you, you but didn't. I was telling Chauncey and, and and Matt the other day, I really want to get a. a TikTok video out about what we talked about on episode 217, I think, about does the government want you to own a house? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I've just noticed it's a ramble. When you do it on your own? When I do it on my own. Chauncey has a way to form, to just tell a story and bring it all home. Yeah. And clear and concise and very energetic, or you can feel her personality come yeah. through it. And that takes a skill yep. that I'm sure that as you practice it more and more, that it will come out. But her editing's gotten great. And so I watched this guy who I'm following that she recommended who's editing. And in it, yesterday, he did a video yesterday talking about how to get more engagement. And one of it was like, hey, just ask for free, freaking engagement. That yep. was one. That was step number one. But as he's going through the video that I didn't notice, started out with a beard. He ended the damn video shaved with just a mustache <laughs> and his shirts changed multiple times. <laughs> And I didn't even notice it, but he's like, there's people who pick up on certain different cues. <laughs> and, and I was like, that editing was so on point that I didn't even pick up the shirt color change like yeah. five times. He had a goatee, like handlebars, like beard. Like, they like say it at the end, like you guys probably didn't even notice did. all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's how I picked up. I was like, yeah. holy shit. Like, <laughs> so you can get really good at this or you yeah. just if, if that's not your deal. Then just again tourstudios.com. Jesse will do all that for you. Uh, if I, if we're going to be a completely transparent with the situation, this is the I think this is the one that makes people quit the most. I think the idea of the podcast makes sense. I think even the expense of the podcast makes sense. I think you come up with some general ideas up front. It's all of a sudden now you've got forty five minutes of content and you realize that is a bear you do to it. do anything with, and and it's a whole other skill to learn. It's it's why ultimately I was so happy when Jesse found Opus Clips and sent it over because while it's not perfect, it gets it down into manageable chunks where again I can see the idea, I can hear the best parts of it, and then I can edit out the parts that sound dumb yeah. from there. Yeah. yeah, it takes hours off of the time. Yeah, AI is not there yet on that. Maybe it will one day, but um, I will always pay to, to outsource this and and make sure that it, it sounds good. And then you can add music. Like Jesse's always added music intros and outros mm -hmm. and enhanced listening experience. So, um, you know, just look again, I always think if you got a little bit of coin, just spend money to outsource it. Cause the other thing is you go record five episodes cause you want to build a backlog. Then you, now you've got editing work to do. Yeah. Then you got real life to do. Then you got a real job to do. And what ends up happening is you don't end up editing and it just sits there and dies on the vine. So, um, number five out of this publish and distribution, right? So podcast hosting. So you sign up with a podcast hosting service, um, to store and distribute your episodes. So we use Spreaker, right? Jesse, is that who we use? Yeah. Yeah. We use Spreaker. Um, Spreaker. There's Podbean. There's, there's so Anchor. Many. There's a bunch of them. So Podbean is one of those things that just sounds pleasant to hear somebody say. Yeah. Podbean. Why did we go with, with Spreaker? enough other people do i think you yeah. have to pick one at yeah. some point yeah because yeah. <laughs> yeah. they're very they're all, they're similar, all similar in yeah. what they offer yeah. yeah and so and it talks about in here you know this is something that i need we need to help with because this is as we're learning this like we just let the we just let the distribution part the syndication part happen but it talks about you know getting in directory so you want to ensure your podcast is available on popular platforms like P apple Podcasts, which we know ours is mm -hmm. spotify google Podcasts for maximum reach um, and then we put this on YouTube. Something I was telling Brian today, I would love to figure out now that, you know, TikTok's going to a longer format. How do we get this TikTok live on here? Uh, I think we had a thousand followers. A thousand now, followers I don't know on the if tour that's page. True. I don't know if that's true all the way because I don't have a thousand. It gives me the option to go live right now. Yeah. Hmm. Have you went live on it? Not yet. Hit the live button to see if it actually works. Hmm. Dang. <laughs> Do that right now while we're on here. I don't know if it actually works or not because I think I have the live button as well and I've tried going live. Victoria can go live. Does she have a thousand people? She's got like twenty five hundred. Dang. 
Yeah. On Instagram? No, on TikTok. Oh, on TikTok. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's a totally different human on TikTok. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't post anything of it from there. I think, I think uh, to your point about YouTube, that, that was a, that's another area of opportunity, I think, that there's always been for us as well. Because YouTube functions so much on descriptions and, and keywords. and Because we're consistent as hell on YouTube, right? It's just, it's just getting the thumbnail right and making your head huge oh, and like whatever it is that you do. But YouTube's obviously another great pace for that, that podcasts live too. Number seven, I'm sorry, six mm -hmm. is promote your podcast. Something that usually people do very poorly. I was going to say, this is actually kind of the biggest one. Mm -hmm. I, the, that's the question I get all the time is like, how do I grow my podcast? How do I grow my it's promote? You Doesn't this go it. back to kind of what Nick was saying? You you record the content, but then you don't actually do anything with Correct. it. Yeah, you're like, what am really I supposed to do next? conscious about promoting yeah. it. Yep. Watching it back too, when Brian used to edit our taco videos, like it, one, he knew what we were trying to convey. So it was, it was a lot easier for him to edit that. But I remember going back and like watching a lot of those. I've, I've, I've recently went back and watched a bunch of them and they still really hold true, but I can see there were parts of it too, where it was like, that's not necessarily like who I was or what I wanted to say. Yes. And I'm, and I'm, I, I find it really hard to go back and edit my own content because I'm highly critical mm. of myself and what I'm saying. And yeah. I want to remove stuff you know nick was saying this the other day about some of the automation or something he's like i just wanted to take this email out but then people responded to it i think i thought it was a shit email <laughs> i encourage you not to do that when you're editing your stuff down or distributing your stuff is, is censor yourself too much yeah because you're taking out the stuff that people care about you're trying to, to essentially kind of you know clean up yourself and it, it's it's defeating the whole purpose of number one which was be, kind of being you being as genuine as yeah, you possibly possible, can a hundred percent that's the big thing though guys like promoting your stuff is as important as filming the stuff and producing the stuff. If you could have the best podcast in the world, but if nobody knows about it, you just got to put yourself out there and you've got to do it very consistently. You've got to put as much, excuse me, as much effort into promoting your podcast, if not more than actually shooting good content. Well, you got to be psyched about it too. Like who's yeah. going to be excited about your podcast if you're not <laughs> right? Like if, I, whenever people talk to us about our podcast, I lead with the name because it's the most ridiculous part <laughs> about this whole podcast. And they, it always it's gets true. a smile. Mm -hmm. It always gets a smile. And then I can be like, obviously, we know there's other awesome podcasts, but right. like this is just how we came up with Are ours. There? And it allows right. us, it allows us to start talking about it, right? So like you you'll be shocked. Don't get too caught up in what you call it or anything like that. Because as long as you're excited about it, other people would definitely oh, be excited about it. Absolutely. It's measure success and iterate. That's an interesting one. Um, that comes with time. Nick does this for us. But Nick does this for us. <laughs> he tracks our performance. Way, right? Like yeah. what works, what titles work, what type of content works 100 percent. but that i mean that in that step number seven right so you yeah as you're going through this step number seven and you're right i can't go live right now yeah unless i'm gaming i guess um but uh Maybe we'll get there we get there follow me find me nick good on tiktok get me to a thousand i'm almost there i'm almost there and then we'll just do the behind the scenes of this but um you know tracking you know measuring success and and you know tracking performance and then gathering feedback is you know look good just go look through our titles and look at the, the there's always we're always constantly trying to improve there's some where we come in here like an s show um just we just ran in here last minute trying to figure out what we're doing and you know brian will be like here's brian's go-to kick around show we're doing <laughs> a kick around, kick around and, that, show. And, and he's named and that's the name <laughs> of the title i'm like guys like no one searches because if you think about kick a around. podcast the whole thing the podcast your your podcast formula is to be searchable for future yes not for right now yes right because that's it's it's designed to go work for you 24 7 yes. whenever people's consuming wherever they're consuming it whenever they are 24 7 so it has to be searchable and so you know i now use again we're going to go back to ai i just like this this title was chat gpt's improvement on saying it was seo friendly for searching um, so that hopefully people go back and say, Hey, you know, I want to master, you know, podcast mastery. I want to master this. I'm a real estate agent and I want to build my business. And this is what it came up with. So only time will tell, but we can also see at times, you know, we can, we measure also our lives also based on the titles. We can say there's been some times where, you know, we've had as many as 60, 70 people on here mm -hmm. live, um, you know, and I also feel that the way Facebook has gone lately, it's it's designed more to suppress views. Definitely for live videos. Yeah. So if you're doing if you're doing a live podcast show, don't get down if you have got two or three viewers because yeah. then we've seen the views go up later. You know, much later on, um, and 
and honestly, like they just live, you know, now it's four, you know, thanks Saka. Thanks for telling us how many people are, are watching us live. But, uh, <laughs> so as we go through this, you know, just track that way you can always improve. And then honestly, you can, you can talk about and post about it. So if you're, if you're, you know, going after and becoming, all right, I live in Stonebridge and I want to really build my book of business only in the Stonebridge area. I'm going to go and talk to business owners and bring them on. I might even talk to the local politicians or people running for the school board or whatever that may be. And then as I grow my audience and following, then I can go to local businesses or maybe businesses around it and maybe gather some sponsorship. And then we can talk about a little bit of, of monet, you know, monetizing it. Yeah. So, um, which is kind of a bonus part of this. Um, and, and we, that's up to our number. That was number seven, right? So yeah. network. So number seven was measure success and, and iterate it. And then we talk about network and collaboration, which we've already, we've already talked about staying consistent which we've talked about this just is, doing every single week. The, the thing the on network and collaborate is, is to try and you want to bring on really valuable guests, but also to synergize with their audience, right? They promote you, you promote them like it's that called, is, yeah, it's called parasite marketing. I was oh, say, this is, is that what we're calling it now. This, no, this is, it's been called that yeah, like, viral yeah. marketing. Well, it's called, it's, it's, yeah. it's being a parasite, right? And, and the most for your business, right? And, and gorilla marketing is say, using yeah. a free, more low cost freeway. So it's a little gotcha. bit of a, you know, you're, you're leeching on to okay. someone else's audience and, and trying to attract them and draw them in to expose them to you. So they start following you. Right. And that's the gorilla part of it as well. Like it's just cheap, okay. cheap and free. We kind of, we kind of glaze over this network and collaborate thing, but literally all the guests that we mentioned at the beginning of this, how did we get all those Instagram DMS emails to assistants, like all kinds of stuff, right? Like that network and collaborate is probably one of the things that made the show the juiciest for the longest time. And and initially, you know, Chauncey's now on zombie house flipping. She was our friend Chauncey before that. Some of this stuff is like, so maybe maybe she should thank us, right? But <laughs> <laughs> but no, like a lot of these people that we had on Stuman, all of these people, they came from our network and they were they were people who had the same idea that we that we have. They they see the value in that parasite marketing. Being on a show where other people are asking you questions is valuable for yourself as well. 100%. So don't be afraid to ask people to be on your show because there's value for that in them, especially if you're editing it and then sending them all the clips, right? Like how valuable is that for them? That's amazing, right? Well, yep. and what we have learned as well is, is as we've evolved in this, like we've gone less guest heavy. Yeah. Um, only because, you know, there's challenges to it from this part of the show and from what we have to offer, you know, I mean, again, business wise, you know, we I mean, we pay for a lot of coaching. We're in a lot of the worlds that we can just come back and and talk about or share our experiences with that. But if you're going it for your local market, yeah, again, the biggest thing is bringing other businesses in um, and bringing in, you know, getting the politicians and mm -hmm. that will live on and it will really, really grow. And just don't worry about the reach in the beginning. Yeah, because it's 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 a, you know, a hockey stick effect of like it's going to be not a lot in the beginning or maybe you have a little bit of a spike of people who are going to support your business, support your show temporarily. And then they just get busy and they don't listen to it because for whatever reason, it's just it's not top of mind. Yep. Um, and then all of a sudden there'll be some shows that do better than others and you just track it. And then well, people are so voyeuristic by nature, right? You're probably going to, you know, fully made up Internet stat, but you're probably going to get less than a quarter of the people who actually see your content to, to acknowledge it to where you know that they saw it. And it's probably less than that. It's probably 10%, right? And so don't don't assume just because, like, I never truly, I never worry about the live viewers of the show. I tr I do not care. Yeah. I'm aware of it throughout the show because it's right there on the screen, but I don't care because you know how I know this works? People come up to me and talk about this at, at, at here, there, at, at real estate conferences, all over the place. So I know it's working regardless of who I see watching it live. Yeah. Well, and even even if it's not watching it live, I mean, we watch we do do ours live. But even if it's not doing it live and watchers live is people go back when they're able to and watch it. Beth I mean, does that every our, week. Beth yeah. will watch this tomorrow. Hi, Beth. Happy yeah. Thursday. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, every time. And then as, as you stay consistent, you know, we, again, if you're doing it live, then you can stay consistent on just those days. But it, you can also batch it. Tamara, Tamara, who who. Uh, runs the closing table. She batches it. She brings, mm -hmm. you know, she shoots four episodes a month, but only shoots twice a month out of it, right? So she runs two shows back to back. 
And then, and then from that, she already has it. So she comes in twice a month with her guests and knocks it out. So you can ultimately do that. You don't have to, be, you don't always have to be in a studio. You can record it over zoom, uh, stream yard, or again, tour studios can handle that for you as well. Um, and from that, you can start building up a batch. So, uh, I know John Lee Dumas from entrepreneur on fire. He records, if I remember correctly, he records once a month and it's on a Thursday, if I remember, and it was like 12 or 14 episodes all in one day. And he does that because then he can go focus on his, on, on just building the business or if he travels, he's got a back. That's amazing. If you have the capacity for it, I could not imagine doing that long with 14 hours, yeah. but that's his business. I get it. I right? get it. That's yeah. his business. He has a set list of questions mm -hmm. and I think it's only 30 minutes long. Yeah. Um, um, you know, our, our good buddy, Justin Nelson from uh, sphere rocket VA was on there. Yeah. Um, he just promoted that. And so that was one of the first business top business podcasts I used to listen to it was entrepreneur on fire. Yeah. And I remember it. And what I also loved about it. And I, I think we should do a separate show pretty soon. I always love what's always caught my attention. And if you're going more, again, if you're building a business that's attracting other businesses, the monthly profit and loss mm -hmm. show kills. Yep. Really? That's I've only, and there's some shows that I go listen to. I only listen to their monthly profit and loss. Yeah. Right. Because again, we're voyeuristic. We yeah. want to know what's working and what's not. Yeah. People like the transparency. Yeah. And I, and I cheer on some, I listen to this other show called uh, wealth without wall street. And they're making, and it's designed to build residual income. And that was their goal. They started in 2020 and they're now making like a little over $50,000 a month residually, you know? Um, and I love hearing their stories on it, Doing what? right? Just investing in a whole bunch of like land deals and like they're testing out a whole bunch of stuff. They've, they've put mo they have money to invest, but it needs to come back. So, um, wow. you know, and then ultimately the show, again, we talked about it, you know, it's, this is the a bonus section of it but monetizing it, right? So as your podcast grows, you can consider monetizing through sponsorships. We've got great sponsors of the show, Tour Studios. We've got uh, Mortgage Mike. We have Armadillo Home Warranty. We got Homeward DFW, the best property management and company in Dallas. We've had some others that we, we've talked to and, and it has to make sense yeah. for, for what we promote. Uh, we're not just here. We're not just here to take someone's money if we don't use them or we don't, you know, we don't trust their service and product. So you need to think about, you know, if you do take on sponsorships, that is a reflection of of the show that yep. you're hosting, as well as you can monetize through affiliate marketing. So again, you know, let me bring back up as you're listening to this. You heard it earlier. If you're interested in this AI, you know, course to learn it and how to implement it in your real estate business, we, you know, if it's worthwhile, we can bring that online through our tour listeners so just message us or go to our facebook page the only real estate podcast worth listening to page um and so that was jesse if you can bring that other part up i don't have it so yeah. there we go um so through affiliate marketing or we've never done this i don't know anything about it but offering a premium content for subscribers Ooh. that is out there we it, can we can actually do that now through uh through spreaker we can as an offer yeah we can and Nick's we, acting like he doesn't have an only fans <laughs> yeah that's yeah. where he sits all his premium content yeah, maybe so. that's where we'll the premium. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly but i mean you have there's a premium on youtube yep. there's a premium on tiktok chauncey was telling me this she paid for um some uh, recipe or something she paid for something and she it shows how many sales this guy made and it was actually actually had to design how to edit his stuff because he and he shoots on, it's a cooking show but they everyone asked how they edit it so well yeah so he just created a quick 10 minute editing thing on how he edits his own show that he already does and he's made 200 and something thousand dollars in like less than a year huh. just on selling this through tiktok it's a premium content on it so look, there's so Dude. much opportunity here that if you use it correctly, and even us, as as when I point a finger, we're pointing three back at us because even we are not maximizing our potential on this. Not even close, dude. Wow. Two hundred thousand dollars for like an editing video? That is nuts. I mean, with what Jesse does, good stuff. If we do a behind the scenes of what Jesse does, oh, for this, and then. I mean, I, I'm just telling you this, this, again, this podcast, this has like, we've got, we've got real lights in here. We've got lights behind you that change colors. 
Jesse took Jesse listened to, you know, you know, wasn't he wasn't it was free advice and consulting, but Jesse moved this, you know, you know, from a video aspect and, and ratio, he moved this table up. Yes. Ooh. Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, ah. I don't like that one as much. I always like the blue. The blue is classic. Yeah, oh, that one's kind of cool. Yeah, so we can change that around. Actually, we should probably do that to see if, if people watch this, they notice the they change. Notice the change. Yeah. In the studio. Um, <laughs> get some music back. To but he pulled this table up to get the the depth, depth. perception because mm -hmm. we were against the wall. Yeah, and so you know he had, he had uh, actually my brother in law came in who is a you know massive photographer and videographer said change this up and Jesse yeah. did it immediately. It looks awesome. So you know great job on that tour studios. Thank you. Sure. And uh, look, episode two nineteen. This is how you master the podcast. Yeah, I like this one. This was fun. It I was mean, a little trip down memory lane as far as some of the stuff we've done and like kind of remembering like how jank it used to be. And it made me a little bit more grateful for this. <laughs> really great. And it's also like I, it's it's nice to be reminded that like, you know, just personally, I mean, the camera's off that the three of us, four of us, this room of people are like we built stuff like these yeah. things were nothing. These were nothing things that like people got together and decided we're going to become something. And maybe it's just my newfound love of baking that just all of a sudden flour and water become food. But like, <laughs> I'm very aware of the fact that like nothing is there and then something is there. And that feels Herculean and exciting at the same time. And I, I don't know, I'm stuck in that mind frame right now. And if you also think about it, you're right. If you also think about it, we didn't have any guides. No. But if you listen, like chat GPT, AI What's helped What's his face us. from Titanium Podcast said, get to 17. That is the only advice. He yeah. said, if you get to seven, RJ Bates, he said, if you get to 17, that's legit. But we were already way past 17 when you heard that, by the way. Probably, but yeah. I don't think they're professional 17. I think they were the old yeah. set up 17. But it doesn't matter. It was consistency, <laughs> yeah. right? So if we go back, there wasn't, we weren't, but there was no guides. Mm -hmm. There was no AI blueprint that could, and, and we asked, as chat GPT help formulate this for us. It's everything that we've already, we did yeah. and we've been doing. And it's not that hard. And the biggest thing is just, you know, staying on that consistent track. Always, again, we track and improve. And what you'll see probably in the next couple of weeks, again, you probably want to get in our AI course, right? You probably want to see what does it look like from tour studios. If you're a local real estate agent in Texas or in Oklahoma, send Mortgage Mike some business, mmgloans.com, right? If you're an investor or you represent investors, get them over to Homeward DFW, like, and then uh, they need some, they need some home warranties over there. They need that hard shell protection because you don't want to just go raw. Not at all. No, Kelderman, you don't. You, that's not good for anybody. You don't. So you need protection. <laughs> Nick's making aggressive eye contact when he was saying this. To <laughs> <laughs> Armadillo dot one forward slash tour t o r e. Um, yeah, that was fun. That was that was a good one today, boys. I enjoyed it. And yeah. Christina, we didn't make it to an hour. Sorry. I don't believe that. I still <laughs> I don't believe that. Every every episode, I just feel like that's going to be our thing now. I'm just going to look and check it and see if we the pass the time frame. So often, yeah. I like, wonder how long those rules are really in play. I never know how any of the rules are because you were even talking about earlier, like, you know, going live and suppressing views and lives are better. But, you know, then you see, like, I don't know what to have. It goes back to when we were talking about, like, how to edit all this stuff in distribution. Where do I hashtag it? Why is it different for TikTok than it is from Instagram? Right. Like, you know, it's just there. There is a lot to learn, but you can also you can you can find people. So to I, I listen, and I would love to have these guys on if we could figure out how to make it real estate related. Um, but it's the guys from the All In podcast, um, and these guys are just tech geniuses. Like one dude, David Sachs created. He was the founder of PayPal. Um, these others were early investors in like Facebook and stuff like that, and they were they were bringing up AI. They were bringing up AI and talking about like you know where they think it's going to go and how it's the, you know, with the new internet and everything else. But, you know, for the longest time we've trusted Google, when you Google something, we've trusted that it was actually real or that was actually raw. You were getting unfiltered results and, you know, Google just launched their AI product. It was it Google genius. I think it is, mm -hmm. um, not too long ago. And it asked you, know, if you asked to make it an image of the founding fathers, the founding fathers were, um, they weren't the right color oh. based on history. And so it was because of how Google um, had their prompts and kind of just their belief systems. And what turns out, even the filter results, I think I sent this to you in a group chat. The this. filter results have, have been a little bit more skewed to what Google wants you to see 
versus just you know getting raw data it makes sense even when i see stuff like like everybody's like oh duck duck go it just gives you whatever i'm like all of these things are going to be compromised at some point this is the this is the reason utopia doesn't exist everybody wants it to be a utopia until they get to the top and then they want all the power like they mentioned like, they mentioned in that podcast if you ask if uh for the data for um iq tests or iq tests relevant they um you know based on race and stuff like that it won't give it because it says iq test isn't you know I'm trying to remember what they said in it, but it just it filters it out and stops it from you actually getting the raw data. Um, I've just accepted that's where we live now. This is like Chitwood Ijafor playing <laughs> George Washington. It's yeah. hysterical. Yeah. So again, there's a lot. You know, when 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 it just comes to building this, there's you know you want to make sure that again you can get real raw relatable content out and and you know just make sure that you use the algorithms the right way. <laughs> yeah. Like it's insane. Yeah. So. AI gets better the more questions you ask it too. I'm learning that. Yep. It does spit out some better results when you ask better questions. When you ask better questions. It does. I don't know. That's the problem. Is like that all in podcasts. And again, this is about learning from podcasts. Like the the one guy said it's not about the quantity. The quantity actually hurts AI. Yeah. Because it's not learning like it's it's spitting out things that may not be true. Yeah. Um, it's about the quality of it. Is that how we ultimately don't get taken over by our AI like like grandmasters, is we just, just ask it, it so we just dumb. pester it like a toddler. We just ask it 9,000 questions till it gets tired of being here and shuts itself down. It just gives up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just gives up. It's like, fuck, I don't fucking know. Just forget it. Because yeah, I'm leaving so. now. <laughs> because I said so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. AI's final response. <laughs> it shuts itself down. All right, boys. This was a good one. It was a good one. Yeah. All right. 219 in the books, uh, podcast mastery. So, you know, reach out to us. Go to our Facebook page, the only real estate group or the only real estate podcast worth listening to there is a facebook group called the only real estate group worth being a part of join that be a part of it um hang out with us yeah if you're an agent locally send your referrals over to homeware property management agents are sending them over there and dana's crushing them absolutely all right guys jesse you got something ready sure bye thanks for watching the show today make sure if you're watching this on facebook you head over to our group the only real estate group we're being a part of so you can watch the extended conversation if you're watching this on youtube make sure to like subscribe and hit that notification bell and if you listen on the apple podcast leave us a review we'd really like it so just do it do it do that over there go to this one and then go to that one thanks